the salvation and the power and the kingdom of our God and the authority of his Christ. What is the authority of Jesus? Let's read on. For the accuser of our brothers, who is that? It's not God. It's not God that's sitting there on his throne, his black book in his hand, open to your name, looking and watching for things to accuse you of so he can keep you out of heaven. The accuser of our brethren is Satan, who accuses them before our God day and night, but he has been hurled down. How? They overcame him by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of their testimony, their personal acknowledgement of the salvation they have through the blood of the Lamb. And that is the authority of Jesus over the devil. It is by that that they overcome him. Can you see the picture? This is a judgment scene here. This is a judgment scene. There's the accuser. There's the judge. There's the judged. And can you see yourself in that picture? Why, wow, there's Sam standing there. And the book is open to Sam's name. Pages and pages and pages on Sam. The devil's book. <laughs> you know, he's got it all written down. Everything he's tempted Sam to do. Everything Sam has even put a little toe into doing. He's got it all there. A very accurate record. Although not quite accurate. He in fact doesn't have it all. Because he hasn't been able to record Sam's motives and his secret thoughts. So it's not a complete record, but he's got it there. Enough at least to accuse him. I mean, if he was chucked out of heaven for one sin, how about this Sam who's committed hundreds? Shouldn't he be disallowed of heaven? And Sam's standing there, his head hanging lower and lower as, as the sins are reeled off by the devil, the accuser. And then suddenly... He remembers something and he raises his head and he looks at God and he says, Father, you know it's all true. It's only half the truth, but it's all true. If that's what stands against me, I don't stand a chance. But I have one plea in my favor. Just one. It's all I have. It's the blood of Jesus. He died for all those sins, every one of them. My friends, that's all you'll ever have to bring to God in your favor. But it's all you'll ever need. It's all you'll ever need. You'll overcome him by the blood of the Lamb. There is one more verse I want to just share with you with regard to the, the Lamb. It's a rather strange one. It's in chapter 6. And, and verse, verses 16 and 17, describing the very last day of earth's history as we know it. And the, the terrified tears are crying out and they called to the mountains and the rocks, fall on us and hide us from the, from the face of him who sits on the throne, that's God the Father, and from the wrath of the Lamb. <laughs> For the great day of their wrath has come, and who can stand the wrath of the Lamb? When last did you see a wrathful Lamb? It sounds almost incongruous, doesn't it? But my friends, as you think of the second coming of Jesus, there's only one way you can face that thought with hope and with assurance, is that you have accepted the blood of the Lamb for yourself. My only hope of standing on that day and looking him in his face and saying, praise be to God, now has come my day of salvation. The only way I can do that, the only way it can be called for me a blessed hope rather than a fearful terror is the fact that Jesus has died for my sins. And when I accept that, and I accept his forgiveness and his cleansing, and I give my heart to him, for him to be the Lord of my life. And that moment, friends, I'm as ready as I'll ever be for the second coming of Jesus. I'm as ready as I'll ever be. He can come. Even though I haven't got everything right in my life yet. Even though I haven't proved 
to God that I really deserve it, because I never will anyway. Accepting that moment, Jesus as my Savior, makes me ready, as ready as I'll ever be for the second coming of Jesus. But for those who don't, they, find, they face the strange anomaly of the wrath of the Lamb. Because you see, the gospel has a flip side to it. On the other side of the coin of the gospel is the judgment. And you read that in the first angel's message. You have the everlasting gospel going to all the world. But in the next, very next verse, the call is made, Fear God and give glory to Him. Why? For the hour of His judgment has come. So the two actually are flip sides of the same coin. You face the judgment because of the gospel under the blood of Jesus Christ. But if you don't have the blood of Jesus, you're still going to face the judgment. But without that, And you'll only face the wrath of God against sin that you have not handed over to him for him to deal with on the cross of Calvary. That brings us to the last little window that I want to take you to on Jesus in the book of Revelation. Not a little one, a big one. And that is our coming king. Amen. Our coming king. The very first chapter of the book of Revelation introduces us to that in verse 7 where it says, look, he's coming with the clouds and every eye will see him. Amen. And every line of prophecy in the book of Revelation climaxes in the coming of Jesus Christ. Amen. And the last chapter speaks of it again. In fact, my friends, the last verse but one in the Bible is both a promise of the coming of Jesus and a prayer for him to come. It is Jesus speaking in Revelation 2 and verse 20. He who testifies of the, to these things says, Yes, I'm coming soon. I'm coming soon. And John's immediate response is, Yes, yes, come Lord Jesus, come. The last promise and the last prayer of the Bible is about the coming of Jesus. How does your heart cry out for the coming of Jesus? Can you say it with John? Yes, yes, come Lord Jesus, come. Tell you, I can't wait for him to come. May he come as he has promised, soon and very soon. The awareness that he is indeed coming soon is what makes the book of Revelation a must-read, a must-read. As it says in the same chapter in verse 7, Behold, I'm coming soon. Blessed is he who keeps the words of the prophecy in this book. It's linked to the awareness that he's coming soon, that we are told we're blessed if we read the book. But we can only have that sense of blessing if we have the hope that's rooted in Calvary's Lamb. And so I want to bring you, in closing, this wonderful offer that comes in almost the closing words of the book. It's verse 17. The Spirit and the Bride say, Come. Come. The, the Spirit, we know who that is. The Bride, that's you. And as the Spirit has put it in your heart to believe in Jesus and to find in Jesus the answer to your quest, you become part of the voice of the Spirit to the world. And you become the inviter. You carry the invitation. Peter, you carry it from door to door. Come, come. And let him who hears not only accept it, but Add to the ripple effect of this. Let him who hears say, come. In fact, whoever is thirsty, let him 